let's just get going. Um, welcome to the CAA virtual reception for their amazing exhibit, Internal Dialogues, hosted by uh, San Fernando Valley Arts and Cultural Center SCORE project. I'm Pat Bates, welcome, welcoming you on behalf of SFBACC. We're thrilled to continue our virtual collaboration with CAA. Please keep your sound muted unless you're speaking. And I am now turning the meeting over to Sylvia Goulden of CAA, the president. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, uh, for hosting us. And I want to welcome everybody, all your members and non-members and guests. Uh, and we are proud of this uh, intriguing internal dialogues exhibit. And it, we extend thanks to all the people who, all the artists who entered, because all of it was excellent work. We had 303 entries and 106 pieces were selected for this show. And I wanna congratulate those who were accepted to the show and for each of the award winners. And thank you to all who entered. We had entries from uh, out, out of the country even. So it was very exciting to see all of the, the work. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our uh, esteemed juror, Jim Morphesis, who will say a few words about the jury of the show. And uh, Jim, are you here? And thank you. you know, I know, can you see me? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because now I can't see anybody because I was playing around with too many things. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, would you like me to say a few words about the judging of this show? Yes, that would be lovely. Um, well, um, it, it was kind of murder because <laughs> it, was, it was dazzling to take the first look at all of the images, and there were over 300 images, um, was uh, uh, kind of exciting. Everything looked terrific. And then uh, I started to go over each one of the works, and I'll tell you, over 300. It took some time. I did spend a lot of time with every work. I uh, spent at least, I looked at everything at least five times, some more. I even tried a magnifying glass. Because one of the problems with judging a show like this online, everything is kind of reduced to um, like the same size. So you have to spend time with it and you have to take a good look at the work. The uh, materials used were so different in all of them. And, and I have to say, artists who uh, put in comments, uh, thanks, because that was actually very helpful. Um, in, in some cases, when I needed a little more information. So I appreciated that. And for anyone entering another show where you're uh, allowed to do that, comment on your work, some little extra information uh, is good for whoever the juror is in, in many cases. Um, and also clearly list your materials. Most people did that. And uh, it was all really exciting stuff. Um, you know, the best thing about judging a show is seeing all this wonderful work. And the worst thing is uh, that you know you're going to make some people who ne you ne <laughs> you never met mad at you. Uh, oh. but, so I tried to include as many works as possible. I wanted the, uh, the award winners to really reflect the, uh, the diversity and the high quality um, that the show, obviously, I think everyone can see, you know, had. So um, that's, that's what was going on with me. It took a lot of time, but uh, I think the show is very exciting. It just was a lot of terrific work. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Jim. I knew, I, 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 I dreaded when I saw the number of entries, I thought, oh, he's gonna have a challenge. It was, and, uh, it was challenging uh, because the work was all high quality and, yeah. uh, and, and, and deserved a lot of looks, which every work did get. I want everybody to know. Well, it became a very thoughtful, interesting uh, selection. So thanks again. And I think it's time for us to go on to our awards. Um, and uh, the artists have asked us to say something about their work if they wish, a few words, few words. 
And uh, if you want to comment on anything, Jim, you're welcome to do so. Um, before we go into it, though, I want to uh, just mention the Carol Ann Watterson Award, which is made possible by a uh, generous endowment from her estate. To honor her memory, the award is given to work that uh, reflects her simplicity and elegant style. So we shall start off with our honorary mention number four. Uh, honorary mention number four, Down the Rabbit Hole by Denise. Is it Cero? Cero, yes. Cero. Denise Cero. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you see it on the screen right now. Okay. Um, really a wonderful mixed media piece. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am definitely a mixed media, but it's kind of an excuse for me to layer papers, <laughs> which is my first love. <laughs> Well, it, it it shows up. It's it's a wonderful piece. Thank you so um, much. Yes, and feel free to uh, say anything else. Um, the the title for this, as many of my paintings, comes to me as I'm working on the painting. And this little guy really was a tough one because I kept working it and working it. Um, it's on cradle board, so that gave me a lot of leeway to scrub it, scratch it, beat it up. And it really wasn't until I got to that point where I took a scratchy sponge and washed the whole thing off that I got all these really wonderful textures and marks that I was able to go back into and play with. And that's how down the rabbit hole came from because I definitely was down the rabbit hole with this one. And, and as it, kind of in the center, there's a little rabbit hidden in there anyway. So that just played into it. I found it. I said there must be. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. Um, well, you know, that, that explanation uh, or description of your process was really good because that's how you created that, the very uh, painterly look that uh, I appreciated so much. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for choosing it. I'm, I'm really honored by that. Yeah, my pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. And award honorary mention number three. Well, sprung loose and disconnected. <laughs> I think very well describes, uh, I'm sure, Suzanne Belcher. <laughs> no, that doesn't describe Suzanne Belcher, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, but yes, I also love loved the title of this three-dimensional collage piece. Very interesting. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank our esteemed juror, Jim Morphesis, for <laughs> finding enough merit in my work to give this piece an award. Thank you so much. Well, I also exactly. want to congratulate all the other winners, along with everyone who got work accepted into the show. We are all winners. Jim had, as we know, a daunting task selecting uh, 106 works out of over 300. So we should all be really proud that we got in. My piece, uh, Sprung Loose and Disconnected, was so much fun to do. I've done little few assemblages during all my years as an artist, but this one just spoke to me. Elements in the piece reflect aspects of letting go of past dialogue seen in the floating film strips. An earplug disconnected from its mini microphone a light switch and batteries afloat, and my selfies and other images printed on organza surrounding the canister holding the bed spring depicts a sense of loneliness and, and anxiety. We have so much going on all around us in this world right now, politics, 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 climate change disasters, the war in the Ukraine, nuclear threats, and on and on, just pick a topic here. Sometimes I feel the only way to survive it all, if even just for a few moments, is to disconnect and spring loose. Very good. I, I, I wanted to turn it around so I could see more. Yeah, it's hard. It's uh, it's tough when it um, when it's a three D piece, you know. Yeah, I I know that you could take more photos to submit, but I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to uh, put them in. So I just thought, well, this is what I'm going to have to do. Well, it was obviously a good shot. The, the way good. you got it in, really, really, the flavor of the piece, it showed up very well with that. Uh, Thank you so much, Jim. 
great, Suzanne. Congratulations. Thank yes, you. Congratulations, Susanna. And now for our second uh, honorary mention. The second honorary mention, Imagine is the title by Lee Newt. Is Lee with us? So Lee is not with us, but it's a mixed media piece. Um, one of the larger ones at 36 by 24 inches and really had to take time with this um, because it's described as mixed media collage piece. So it was a lot that went into this. A lot of the work appears to be cut out work. Some of it printed, some of it found, um, but it was a pretty dazzling piece. So uh, I, I thought it was a great job. It's quite amazing, isn't it? It really so, so, much, so much detail in it, and each each area is so uh, interesting in and of itself. Well, congratulations to her, and uh, I guess uh, now we will go on to the. Uh, I'm sorry, she wasn't here. Uh, uh, honorary mention number one. And honorary mention number one: plants music piece with three nightingales, Evelyn Rappin. Hi. Oh, good, you're here. Hello, I am here. That's actually not the piece that was chosen. I think it was the other one. Uh, you know what? Uh, no, that's it, fine. It, May, it, yeah, the, the one that was chosen was its mate, which was um, didn't have the bright ye yellow. It was very similar. It, uh, it, it was yes. made to this one. But yeah, the one that I did choose was the, uh, was, was the other was one. The other one. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Oh, um, apology. Apology for that. I don't know how that happened. It doesn't matter. Um, they're both more or less a plea for peace, both the pieces, um, because in my studio, I listen to news radio most of the time, just very low, and the war had just started in Ukraine. So really, I, I have quite a lot of symbolism of, um, Peace. I mean, a lot of flowers and plants um, are symbols of peace and harmony. And um, so it kind of morphed into this anti-war, or both of them are kind of anti-war pieces. And the nightingale is the bird of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. and, um, so it was really just a plea for peace, both, both of them. And the other one has three nightingales, and um, that is the, oh, excuse me. What was the name of the other piece that should be? It, it is part of the um, plants music piece series. I, I've done quite a few, um, and, and they're just because of what's happening in the world today. Yes. Um, uh, so, would you like me to share my screen and show the other piece, Pat? Yes. Okay, let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, I can do that right now. Let me just oh, stop okay. here for a second and I'll find it. And I, I know where we left off. So um, <coughs> let's see here. Um, give me one second. And someone, in the meantime, uh, Lynn, someone ma remarked that that piece was a beautiful piece. Well, that one's got the peace lilies in it, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not very good at public speaking, so doing just fine. You're very charming. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I think we've got it here, and let's see here. Hold on one second. It's similar. But... There it is. Oh yeah! Wow. That one explodes. Oh, actually, that sorry, that's not the one. I uh, <laughs> that's another pop art one. I, I actually got this mixed up with another show. Sorry. <laughs> so we got the right one or what? Uh, no, honestly, I can't, we, I can't we may remember take all night. But uh, hey, hey, Evelyn, it's good for you. We got to see more of your work. <laughs> yes, uh, that wasn't the one. So. Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but yeah, thank the, you. The mate, the mate to the one that, that 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 we were just showing. It was very close. It's just a little bit softer, but uh, really about the same. I went back and forth. 
then I chose the one that just, you know, it just kind of, yeah, that that's the one for me. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. It was, it, was it, it, one. it was an error before. Um, I was very pleased to be on the show. So thank well, you. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, wonderful piece. All right, now we're going to move on to our Carol Ann Watterson Award and Jim. So um, Caroline Watterson Award, uh, Simple Solutions Number One by Patricia Williams. Is she here? Yes, I'm uh, here. I believe oh, so. I'm here. I'm, I go by PK. PK. Yeah. Oh, okay, PK Williams. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I love, first of all, I love the title of this whole exhibition. I just think it's really intriguing. Internal dialogues, which I have with myself all day long, especially being alone in the studio, <laughs> is always doing stuff. So it was, it was just a great title. And uh, when Suzanne Belcher was talking, I kind of, this is along the lines of the politics going on and everything in the world. And you're just constantly thinking and my thoughts are, you know, everybody has the answer, right? Everybody, all the politicians, they know what to do and everybody you talk to, oh, well, if we just simply did this or simply did that, but really whatever they do, there's another repercussion to someone else or somewhere else or whatever. So this piece has so much in it because it's trying to state that simple solutions are not really simple after all. So it's from a series I'm doing on that idea. So it worked worked for me and um, um, also the let's see oh the layering I love to layer just like I think she was the fourth uh, honorable mention said it's about laying laying papers down and I love doing that so that was you know putting more to it that's really simple is not simple and when I've showed this to people they go simple solutions I don't get it that's not a simple piece so but that's the point that's the point so thank you so much I appreciate this award I I've only been in this group I think about a year but I've loved it so thank you and a good good explanation Lo I love the layering the patterns um and uh, and all the material I mean it was a true uh paper collage Thank for, you. For the most part, and uh, wonderfully done. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Congratulations. 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 And uh, I'm glad you've been with us for a year and are enjoying the group. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So now for our third place award. Uh, third place award. The title is, and it seems like it was only yesterday by Peter Knapp. Yes, hi. Uh, I wish I could get my full name in here. I can't figure out. It doesn't seem to want me to change my name. So Peter K, that, that's me. I'm Peter now. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to meet. It's a pleasure to meet you all, and I really, really appreciate this award. Thank you, uh, Peter. This was one of those works. Um, after looking at the, uh, the description, and I think maybe you had some comments about the work as well that I was reading. Um, you know, the collage part, the ink part, it just all meshed together so well. It was hard for me to differentiate between the different mediums that, that you were using. Uh, just very, very skillfully done, solid piece, has a lot of weight to it. Uh, and, uh, and a lightness and a festive quality as well as a very serious tone. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, um, I, uh, I've done a fair amount of printmaking in the past and uh, I'm really fussy with prints I sign when I do. And I collected quite a few. I said, no, they don't work. And I just had a lot of them uh, together in one spot. And I was getting ready for a, a solo show uh, last March and uh, just organizing my ideas and what I wanted to wanted to put into the show and this idea just popped into my head. I said, let's use some of those prints. Let's take elements of them because I love mixed media and let's make it work. So I added, uh, you know, elements of each and went in with pencils and paint and all kinds of things like that. And uh, it was really, uh, it was a trip down memory lane, but I think it was also, I, I took a step forward in, in my development. So I, I really uh, had fun uh, entering this piece uh, when when I saw the show uh, 
being uh, promoted, I said, that's one of the pieces I want to try for in, in this show. So I really do appreciate uh, this honor. And I'm, I'm a new member now. I just signed up. Good. Welcome. And congratulations for that, too. Uh, and yes, it's a piece filled with your history. W wonderful, Peter. Well done. Thank you very much. Welcome, Peter. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, now, our second uh, award, second prize. Whee! Yes, second prize, Angel of the Crossroads by Sharman Davidson. Wow. Hi. Um, I don't know if you can hear me or not. I cannot figure out how to turn on my camera. And um, <laughs> well, we do hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Well, I have no idea why the camera won't come on. I've tried all the settings and it's just got the red line through it and it won't <laughs> it won't start, but at least you can hear me. I'm sorry about that. How about if you just click on the thing that has the stop video or the start video that has the red line? Oh, I have. And it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, I clicked it and clicked it and clicked it until <laughs> I break the clicker pretty soon. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't used Zoom before. And my husband's name is on, on the the little square, it says Richard Jennings. That's my husband's name. So I don't know how to change that either, but maybe next time I'll do better. Well, we can hear you and we wanna congratulate you. So could if you have something to say about this marvelous piece? It's amazing. People are commenting and how beautiful it is. Yes. Um, First of all, thank you so much for the honor of, of the award. I'm really excited about that. And um, I appreciate that so much. Um, this piece is one that really is about my internal dialogues because I have a lot of trouble with decisions. And um, I think everybody probably is familiar with the phrase or the, um, you know, idiom of at a crossroads. When you're at a crossroads, that usually means you're having trouble deciding something and it's usually an important decision. So um, in mythology, the, the crossroads is guarded by the three fates who don't usually help people very much and tend to confuse matters and, and uh, make the outcome not so happy. So I wanted to project to a happier scenario and that the angel maybe would help me with the decisions instead of trying to confuse me. <laughs> and so that's, that's kind of where that whole thing came from. Lovely. It's a, yeah, delicate, beautiful. I, I love the tic-tac-toe and all the crosses there too. But there's that air of danger because uh, your crossroads, uh, it's train tracks. Right. Um, so that adds an <laughs> edge to it that's always there. Yeah, everything came from, from really widely disparate sources. The red parts are my own monotypes that I cut up. And okay. then the Bible pages are from a hundred-year-old over a hundred year old little Bible. And the tic-tac-toe pages came out of an old book. Um, it was an engineering book, but apparently someone's child had played tic-tac-toe on one of the pages. And <laughs> the, the train track came out of a, a magazine. I think it was, I don't remember what the, if it was life or look or whatever, but it's a really old one from the fifties or something. I think, I think the aging, uh, the, aging the, the, the source of your material makes it all the more important and, uh, ex, you know, wonderful, beautiful piece. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank you. Beautifully done. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks so much. Congratulations. Yes. And now we'll go on to our first prize, first award. So we have Entropy by Melinda Fine. 
she's here, I think. Melinda. There she is. Melinda, we see you. Uh, unmute yourself, honey. Unmute. You, now can you hear me? Yes, yes. now we can. All right, okay. Yes, entropy. Um, you know, David Byrne and the Talking Heads had a line in his song, Wild, Wild Life, that said, things fall apart, it's scientific. And this piece is about the tension between inspiration and execution of a work. I might have this fabulous idea, and then when I get into the studio, there ensues a squabble in my mind where I realize I can't really figure out how to make what I thought was so wonderful. And I just often fall back on some sort of calcified ideas or techniques, which are the bones, and it, it just falls apart. And that's when I say, oh, to hell with it. So th this, this probably, you can relate to that internal dialogue, which is how am I gonna make this happen? Um, it, you did it so <laughs> precisely. I mean, there, there, not, you know, it's hard to see the entropy, you know, because there it is and it's so powerful and so stark. You know, usually I, I look at and, and draw into more painterly surfaces. Could not get away from this piece, kept going back to it, trying to study it as much as I could to see how it was done because it's so meticulously done. Uh, <laughs> but then you, I also kind of understood the entropy and what you were talking about in it. So I, I think it's just a beautifully done, very strong piece. Oh, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be included in the show. Well, congratulations, Melinda. Thank yes, you. Yes, congratulations, Melinda. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, well, congratulations to everyone, uh, everyone that won an award and everyone that got in the show and everyone that entered even. Uh, we would like to uh, give other artists a chance to say something, a brief brief statement about their work and they, if it's included in the, in the exhibit. And uh, I, um, I think Barbara can have... Um, Excuse me just a minute. I need to uh, get my Zoom back up. Okay, there I am. Uh, yeah, if you would just uh, put your name in the chat and uh, say that you want to talk or I'll, I'll go or something like that. And I will, uh, and Quaylin and I will look at the chat and try and find you and I will look for your picture. So let me share my screen. Thank you. Hmm. Screen two is not showing up. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Or is it just what? It's, it's, no. blank. it's a big, just, just has your blank. name. Let me yeah, let me just stop sharing and try again. Uh, <laughs> I get out of chat here. I can't even stop sharing. Okay, there we are. All right. So. Yeah, we've got three people who volunteered. Nancy Lawrence, Jane Dunnewald. Um, somebody, Jaderi Barnes, and also MJ. Lewis. Okay. Okay. Um, and Pat, MJ. Not Pat sure. or Barbara, who is uh, going to call on one of these people? Such a beautiful <laughs> show, really. I want to see more. Um. Well, we can start with the beginning of the list here. Um, Melinda, let's see, we did Melinda. Nancy yeah. Lawrence should be Nancy. the first one. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah. I'm here, I have two. The portrait and the one to the right of it. Okay, so that, that one is um, Babes on Bauhaus Bench. And um, I used to do lots of portraits 
uh, and figurative work in maps. And I haven't done that for quite a while, um, but I decided to take a photo of my grandkids and um, just go back to it for just for this one piece. And um, so that's, that's what that is. It's a portrait of my grandkids. Lovely. And then I have another one. Okay, that one is, um, it's part of a series. It's actually, well, it's obviously number 10 of a series called Myth, Muse, and Metaphor. And, um, you know, I began with that idea, as many others have said, of chaos and all that's going on right now. And it comes out in the art. Um, I never exactly know what it is I'm going to do when I begin. And um, so this, and, and something I wanted to mention, it's, um, I discovered a site, you know, we're always discussing copyright issues. There's a site called In the Public Domain, and it's really, really great. It has all, all of these centuries old images, and it's wonderful for inspiration. And you can also steal the images without having to worry about um, copyright issues. So this thing on the bottom, that kind of structure was, um, it was just an idea that I got from looking at some drawings that somebody had done centuries ago. And uh, then it kind of just morphed from there. So, so that's that. And thank you very much for choosing my piece. I'm, I'm sorry, Nancy, may I ask, um, yeah. It's collage, is there paint in this as well? The paint is the blue okay. on the in the background right. on the top, like the sky, and the yellow and the green, and the rest of it is um all glued down, <laughs> stuff cut out and glued down. I know it's really hard to tell because the images get flattened out when you're looking at them, and it's really hard to tell what's what. Well, it's because you, know, you laminated everything and put it in very precisely and, and very well, too. A wonderful piece. Thank you. Lovely piece. Nice piece. Thank you, uh, Nancy. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay, my pleasure. Hey, the next one is Jane uh, Dunwald, and here is her first piece. Uh, Jane, are you here? I think she is. Uh, yeah, I thought she was also. Oh, Jane. Well, perhaps we can come back to her later. Um, uh, okay. Just, Jerry, I'm sorry, I just unmuted. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so used to being a leader, I couldn't find the button to unmute as the participant. <laughs> Shoot, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, well, I was, as is true of everyone here, very pleased and thrilled to be included. So thank you, Jim. My pieces are perhaps a little more um, obtuse because they are related to a series I've been working on and exploring related to archetypes. And this particular piece was the guide and it's a mixed media piece. I'm a, at my core, I'm a textile person. So I know how to dye fabric and manipulate fabric and screen print fabric. And I've been moving into over the course of the pandemic, a new era where I'm incorporating papers. So this particular example includes maps of uh, Hiroshima and a variety of other paper surfaces that are laminated and then the red line that you can see that tra tra traverses up from the very bottom to the top is actually a, a hand stitched line and that is the path that I feel that I'm on as a teacher to guide students to their best selves and I don't know whether you'd like to look at both pieces simultaneously because there is one other piece that was included yes um let me find it there 
And so this is my saboteur. And from an archetypal perspective, the saboteur is the part of you that doesn't make the choices that you need to make in order to succeed. And that can be from a physical standpoint, or it can be from an, uh, a, st a standpoint of the art that you make. And so this piece has fabric and actually tomato netting melted into the surface and leaves that I printed uh, through a botanical process. But it all revolves around the fact that if we don't make the choices, the skeleton that we came in with is the same skeleton that we go out with. Wow. Wow. Can I mention that Jane is going to be our, our next speaker <laughs> for our collage meeting? I was so, so honored and privileged for you to invite me. Thank you so much. Oh, we're so delighted to have you. Jane, you. May, I, may I ask what, uh, what grade level do you teach or these private lessons you do? Um, well, for the past 25 years, I've taught public well, not, not public, but I've taught workshops around the country on surface design techniques because that's what I'm known for. And over the past two years, the classes that I've taught have been online, but they're definitely for adults. I started with children and I like children a lot, but I don't like them all that much. <laughs> I, 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 one final thing, and uh, I hope you take this as a compliment. That's how it's intended, but I could see these huge. Yeah, very, I know. Very physical about them, about a lot of pieces. But I remember thinking that when I was looking at these. Yeah, thank you, Jim, because I used to work larger and I've worked smaller oh. because I moved into a smaller house and downsized and realized that I wasn't really working with a gallery anymore. And I couldn't keep making big pieces because I had nowhere to put them yeah yes no we all understand that. i'm kind of translated into a smaller size but that's a huge vote of confidence thank you so much yeah, and it works extremely well the size too but uh, uh yeah i'd yeah. like to to jump in and say that jane also uh she we should give an award to a collage artist should give an award to those members who bring in the most members, we've gotten three other members joining because of Jane. So, oh, thank you. Thanks so and, much. And I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's such a valuable thing that you offer. And these exhibitions are so valuable, whether they can, I know they're continuing both online and also in person. And you have these reputable, amazing judges that we can learn from. And so that's, I, you know, at my heart of hearts, I'm an educator and I, have just been so, Kim Svoboda, who is a, a former student of mine, introduced me to all of you in 2019, and that's why I'm here. And so I just, I, I, I've already taken more than my amount of time, but I'm so grateful to be here and to be part of this. So thank you again, Jim. Yeah, you're welcome, congratulations. Thank you, congratulations, Jane, and we look forward to seeing you next, uh, this month. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, next person is uh, Jerry Barnes. Um, let's find. Hi, that? hi, thank you, and apologize. I can't even type my name incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you would be Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Jim, and thank you to everybody uh, for putting on this wonderful show. It, it's it's kind of a funny thing to say, you know, but I'm sure like lots of artists, we go to a lot of show openings, but we don't always get the opportunities to actually speak with all of the artists. So I really, I love this part. I love this part of the show, actually, where people talk about their work. It's, it's just amazing. And thank you, Jim. I can see how you had such a difficult job because everybody is so different and so creative. I think, I think it's wonderful. Okay, in, in relation to my work, so I work on, these are 30 by 40 wood panels, and I work in mixed media. And uh, if anybody knows my work, my kind of palette is it palette is kind of limited but recently I started a series uh, that I call layers and when I was a kid in school one of the subjects I really liked was geology not that I was great at remembering 
in all the Jurassic, you know, the different eras and stuff. But I love drawing the maps, you know, where you could layer the different layers of rocks and strata. And so this is kind of a, like a, a throwback to that where I'm looking at the different layers. But as you get to a certain age in life, you're also looking at the layers you've had in your life and the things that you've done. And if you dig down deeper, you, you kind of come to different things. So this is kind of the, the metaphor that I was using here in the, in, in the layering. And most of our layers, of course, are going across on, on, on one level here, mostly horizontal. And, and then you get one that's vertical, that kind of is a barrier to things that you want to do. And somebody else spoke a little earlier on about the skeletons. I thought that was just wonderful that I, I guess uh, we come and we go. And so um, in, in relation to the images I use, and then again, I have a huge resource of images. And when I start out with my layering, which I use chalk paint because it's very flat, it dries very quickly, which sometimes is great, but sometimes it's a nuisance. But the chalk allows me to get all these different textures. So if you're familiar with things like stressed furniture, they use chalk, chalk paint on that and they kind of scrape it away and you get this wonderful effect. And so the, the color of the paint in the background, the, the palette that I select, then kind of dictates to me the images that I put on top. So I have a, a quite a large collection of different images. Sometimes I make them myself, sometimes they're found images. A lot of times, even images that I find, I will add to. So the image I put on is not necessarily the image that was original. And so I have a lot of fun creating them. The problem for me then is I create my own difficulties because as you can see in this piece, for instance, there are several layers. So I might get one layer done and then I have problems <laughs> creating the second layer. So it's like creating several paintings in one go. And, and when you're happy with one layer, then you're not happy with the one underneath. So sometimes they take quite a lot of time. I spend a lot of time looking at them, actually doing nothing, but trying to uh, come to a solution. And then some lady said earlier on, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night with this idea in your head and it sounds really great, but when you go to execute it, it's a totally different thing thing but I enjoy them a lot and at the end of the day sometimes it will take me several weeks or maybe a couple of months to actually complete a piece. Well that's it. the time you put into it shows up in all of these layers and it's really fascinating. Gerald, chalk paint is that like gouache or a tempera paint? It's kind of gouache. I believe I believe originally it used to be made from milk. I'm not quite sure what the contemporary or the modern version is. I doubt very much it's actually you'd be made with milk. But in the old days, farmers used to use it and it was made with milk. Yes, and then, and then they just add chalk to it. It, what? it was um, the, uh, paint the like that was called casein paint. Right. Um, oh, okay. Which was popular in the 1950s with illustrators. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell me the, the name uh, that you, what is it that you called it? What's the name of it? Chalk? Chalk, yes. As like the teachers used to use in school on the, on the oh, chalkboard. Yes, chalk. H-A-L-K, yeah, chalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, you know, chalk is in a powder. We see it in the hard form, of course, in a stick or something like this, but it can be added into paint. So it gives you, it, it's very flat, which is what I like. Now, I, when I finish the process, of course, I seal it to prevent it from fading and stuff. And sometimes I varnish it. Sometimes I will use um, wax and will wax the image and polish it. And it gives a lovely kind of a soft sheen to the finished piece. Uh, the advantage I, I've done I've done pieces on canvas as well, but again, somebody else men mentioned earlier on. I like the wood panel because it takes a little more abuse, so you can kind of scratch back on it and do stuff like that, which I prefer to do. Great. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. My yeah, Gerald. My pleasure. Thank you. Listen, uh, uh, Gerald. Uh, <laughs> the other good part about uh, being a juror is that you get to steal ideas. <laughs> okay. You're welcome to anyone. Chalk paint. I'm going to find it. <laughs> if, I can, if I can say something about chalk paint, this is Denise Cerro. I used to do chalk paint furniture, and chalk paint is actually has a calcium carbonate in it. 
you can make your own chalk paint with just regular latex house paint and plaster of Paris. And that plaster of Paris added to it gives it a very dull finish and it lets it dry really hard. So it doesn't dry like a latex paint. It dries like, a, like it has plaster in it. Mm -hmm. And it's really quite wonderful, Gerald. So I'm excited to see you use it in artwork because as much as I've used it for, for furniture, I've never, that's never really dawned on me. Okay, thank you. So thanks. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, uh, next person who has to speak is Lori Markman. Mm. Are you here, Lori? Hi, yes, I am. Great. Hi. Um, so Jim, thank you for accepting my work. I, I was really thrilled and I was also so pleased because I really like both the pieces you picked and I was so glad that somebody else appreciated them too. Oh, that, yeah. that doesn't always happen. Oh, they're very good. So this piece is part of a series that I'm doing. It's called Magical Landscapes. And I started it um, at the end of, um, 2020 because I was so agitated about the political situation for since 2015. I was making myself nuts and doing a political series, which was very intense. And after Biden won the election, I, I simply had to stop that. So I said, I'm going to make the most serene, beautiful, lovely pieces I can make. And I took my inspiration from traditional Japanese landscape. And I wanted to capture the Japanese aesthetic qualities of beauty, harmony, humor, flatness, pattern. And so every work in this series is different. This one happens to be taken from a picture that a friend of mine took of some park she was in. And I, I wanted to, I don't like to do, make literal images so that things look exactly like what they are in reality. I wanna have a layer on it where you know what they are, but they're not, they don't really look like that thing. So my trees in the background, the, the green leaves in the upper half of the, the drawing, mm -hmm. they're from um, botanical, uh -oh. French botanical prints that I used. And I used text um, for the reflection of those, those trees and leaves and vegetation in the water. So everything I wanted to sort of have your eye not immediately understand what it was in some way and have to look at it a little closer. So this one I just used, I used old drawings, I used a photograph, I used uh, some Japanese prints, I used colored paper, I used paint, paint chips from a hardware store, pencil, acrylic, and pastel. So, that's, that's oops, that, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then my other one is called um, Woman at Her Dressing Table with Candles. And this was done quite a number of years ago. And um, it's, I had done a bunch of monoprints and I was using monoprints that didn't work out. And I just wanted to create a tone poem sort of from these monoprints. And I hit upon that idea sort of evolved out of it. So I wanted to capture a scene, again, not literal, but um, much more abstracted and impressionistic of a woman at night before a dressing table, everything's sparkling, the candles are sparkling, she's got glass vases, you can see the black necklace with little spots, you can see her hair cascading down black on the left and slashes of red that would be kind of lips. 
So I wanted to mix everything together, but have it give the feel and the atmosphere of that scene. So that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Good, thank you, Laurie. Thank you. Okay, the next one is MJ, and I'm hoping that that's how you're, ah, yes. Is that you, MJ? Yeah. Wait, not this. No, no it isn't. <laughs> you had it. I saw it. Come back. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah, this um, this um, transfiguration, I call this, it's, it's part of a larger series that's been going on since um, I finished a 20-year marriage and then was kind of uh, set free and on my own and uh, discovering new spaces and places and kind of seeking ideas of what would be an ideal home. So I started to do a whole series around that. And this is like, you know, four years later. And here I'm pretty much showing you and sharing with any viewer the um, general experiences of going forward and uh, making this turn, that turn, watching out for that pitfall, um, going across that bridge, uh, hoping that there's a, a ladder or um, escalator up. Um, yeah, so it, it also is within, you know, a lot of hopefulness with the greenery and uh, the clear skies. And um, within that, I'm just kind of hoping that others will you know, acknowledge that this journey is, uh, it's a lot of risk. And there's also the unknown rewards of it and, and the small wonders along the way, like the bunch of tulips there, right at the end of the labyrinth. You know? <laughs> Well, you know, all the uh, the turmoil you have in the piece, so beautifully done. And kind of held together in a very positive way, as you just mentioned. You know, the green really holds it together. Um, so the outcome should be positive, or at least can be. I think all yes. That, as you said, really does show up in the, in the uh, work. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. I'm really so glad to be a part of this show. And, and uh, like another artist said, to have the opportunity to dialogue with other collage artists and, and have our, our common languages like easily understood among ourselves. It's, it's really fun. Congratulations on uh, this piece. It's beautiful, very meaningful, very- Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and um, just one last note that I, I have in the statement about the piece is that I call it, you know, transfiguration because I'm also um, holding hope just a general hope for collective humanity that um, we will over time, over eons, you know, work towards changing and, 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 and maybe reach a perfected state. Why not hope? That's thank all we <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, MJ. Sure. Anyone else? Uh, there is a Mary Jo Clark, and I know I volunteered. <laughs> it was Mary Jo Clark. Yes. Yes. Uh, Great. Yeah, I'm here. She's a member too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a new member. Um, this is the first show I've ever entered with um, Collage Artists of America. Um, so I was thrilled to have my piece accepted. <laughs> I was not anticipating it happening. So, um, and I, I, I kind of took the, the theme or the, t the title of the show pretty literally, um, as far as like thinking about how I work and I've, my, my process of working has changed over time. Um, and I also was a teacher for, art teacher for 32 years. So, um, I think that came into play too, in terms of um, the words that are included in this um, were things I talked about with my students. Um, and so you see things like color and shape and texture and reworking the surface and just kind of working through. So it sort of 
follows a path from the top down the side to, to kind of to the completion of the, uh, the finished composition. Um, and I used a variety of different things. The, the sort of yellowish leaf in the background was from a, a monoprint and then some, there's some treated papers from National Geographic that were done with Citrusol and just pieces out of books. I, I like to incorporate text a lot into my work. So that, that comes out in here as well, um, not only in the words that I use, but in part of, as part of the composition. And then I, I, I like to, I to always title my pieces and I actually enjoy that process. Sometimes it's um, challenging. Sometimes the name comes to me in the middle of working on it. Um, but this one, as I got to thinking about it, it was like, well, this is sort of my, the usual manner of working. And that's where the title modus operandi came from, you know, with that sort of literal meaning. So um, again, thank you. Um, you know, I was thrilled to be part of the show and you know, I've enjoyed listening to everyone um, talk about their own work. Yeah, well, congratulations, very nice. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Wei Lin. And let's find you. It's, oh, I have to. It's oops. called Finally a Sunflower. Yeah. There you are. Okay. Hello, I'm Hoi Lin Lung. Can I, if you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, I'm the newsletter editor of Collage Artists of America. And uh, this is a self-portrait. Uh, it didn't start out that way. Um, it started as a series of internal dialogues that forced me to be introspective. There are 12 heads, each with two sides. They are arranged as if numbers on a clock and more or less reflect the hours of daytime. I connected the heads with tw 12 bits of personal sayings and advice, like harness repose, beware history, feel texture, your need, my perspective, tell all, curve through, go everywhere, repeat nothing, fit insides, no little, mix well. And that's how the structure started. Then, the heads fit on sunflower petals, and soon enough, I ended up with a whole sunflower. It was made partly from a picture of dust from the dryer and of kelp parts, photos um, that I took of kelp. The uh, flower grows out from the sea, like we all did at one time, billions of generations ago. Still, it was a confused looking sunflower, and the sayings got in the way, so I took the words out. Then I added in a connector device in the center of the sunflower. The connections were based on images of plumbing parts. Late in the process, I realized that it was me that was the sunflower and the piece got redefined as a self-portrait. I think this is my very first self-portrait since eighth grade, but this one, in my opinion, is very accurate. Mm. That's <laughs> okay. And oh, can I please thank my cousin Dolin for coming? I really appreciate it. Hi, Dolly. And also my friend Mita Rago, who is in the show. She has two pieces. <laughs> I was well, listen, thank you. Wonderful hearing all of this. I try to figure so many things out. Sometimes I'm right, but the information you gave, along with the other artists, is really interesting to me. It's quite wonderful, Quaylen, and it's very much you. Oh. <laughs> ah, that's, uh, that's, uh, belongs to Jean Hess, isn't it? Yes, hi. There she is. Hi, Jean. Hi there. I don't have any, anything profound to tell anybody. This is just has been a wonderful, wonderful exchange. I want to thank Jim for putting me in the show and all of you for being here to critique everything. 
um, two pieces were selected and I just have to say that I try to approach life with a sense of humor and I just feel that the two pieces you picked demonstrate how completely befuddled I am most of the time and how how completely uncertain I am about most things and um my hidden dialogue is very diffuse and so usually what happens is I'll look through the thousands of little clippings that I've saved and that's things from ephemera from a hundred years ago and family stuff and magazines that friends give me and um, one one little fragment will suddenly lead to an image that that will say something and I I guess if this piece is kind of illustrative of my work in general, where I like I like ethereal, I like the idea of transcendence, of floating, um, I like a lot of things with heavenly bodies and um, you know flowing, flowing lines, flowing fabrics, and so this is this is just reflective of that. Um, pure and simple. The other piece, on the other hand, is reflective of repression. <laughs> wow. Again, you know, I think there's some humor in all that. And I think repression has its creative elements too, because they'll, they'll bite you from behind. <laughs> you think you've for, forgotten something or laid it aside and there it is again. And in, in this case, it's just a sort of a translucent panel hiding um, a Renaissance lady. <laughs> There's nothing really ethereal about it at all, which is a little unusual for me. So well, I'm not you. sure about that, but uh, you know, and I relate <laughs> to everything you're saying. It, <laughs> it was just all there, you know, in the work, but you know, it's awesome. So, beautifully done that it that it all works you really that that's your process you really put it together well yeah. thank you this has been so much fun it's just it, it's so elevating i love this group yes um, we love you <laughs> yeah. thank you jane jane my mouth is you can call me fred <laughs> okay fred we'll see you later <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jean. Jeez. <laughs> I'm very punchy, everybody. I'd be glad I'm here. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I think, reflective of what we've been trying to say. Exactly. Okay, next person we have uh, is Janet Black. Hello. Speak up. Uh, hi. <laughs> I, I did submit three images of this so you could see the, the side and the back as well. Uh, I don't know if you have them available. Um, no, that's yeah. a different one. No, just one. Is... No, only one shows up in the show. Oh, that's too bad. Um, the, uh, the, idea, the idea of, of internal dialogue, of course, is... is uh, fascinating and we all we're all plagued with it so to speak um what i did with this I've, I've been wanting to do more work with three three d objects and the basis of this is one of those little uh figures that you can buy for figure drawing you know with the arms that you can move around and the legs and the fake head and uh and the basis was actually something i found at ikea so the it's a it's a it's the base with the black metal circle and i decided to combine those two elements and see what i could do uh the uh the the piece that's inside of the circle was something that i made with my laser printer it says on the back side which you can't see at the moment uh is red with black lettering that says no 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 and the front is uh the the one that says yes 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 so what's happening is that this creature this this figure is making that important decision to break through and and to break through that log jam of an internal dialogue 
Uh, if you could see it from the side, you would see that uh, the back part of it in profile is all in black and white. And the front part, she emerges into color. And she has, even, even if you see the, uh, the foot that's come all the way through, she's wearing a, basically a ruby slipper, <laughs> which is part of the magic of coming through. And one hand, as you see on, on the upper left, is unformed. Uh, the hand that made it through is now formed into fingers and thumb, and it's essentially, she's becoming real. Very and I did a lot of stitching with this. It's another thing that I've really enjoyed lately is uh, incorporating my sewing machine and sewing fabrics and uh, the, the uh, inset inside the circle is also stitched on with uh, just needle and thread and it's a very simple stitching technique. But I like the texture and the line that I can use uh, with a sewing machine. I really feel that it is exactly that breaking through. There's no question about it in my mind when I saw it. That's, you know, here I come, ready or not. <laughs> ready or not, yeah. And this is the most kind of wonderfully triumphant uh, yeah. part of the, uh, the three dimensional piece. And even though we can't see it all, uh, this was like the obvious one to choose. Yeah, very yeah. nice. But wonderful, just wonderful. Thank you. Okay. We have any. Do we have anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, there may there may be other people here who were in the show. So, and anyone? I'm not sure if there's anyone who you know might want to speak, who are in the show and are you know just haven't talked yet. Well, I can so. Yay. I can also after um, she's gone. <laughs> I might say something as well. Okay. Okay. Well, that's thank you, by the way, Jim, for picking this very funny piece. <laughs> it's, um, you know, one of the things about getting older is you amass stuff. Not on purpose, but I have this gigantic collection of scarves that I, and I guess I never threw any out. And I finally overflowed the very large drawer they were in and put them in a um, big plastic bedspread bag. And they were been sitting in my studio and I was getting ready to do a collage. So I pulled this out and then I thought, oh, well, okay. And I picked this one because it's one that I'll probably never wear again. This is only half of it, by the way, it's gigantic square. Uh, we were wearing those, I guess, in the late seventies and early eighties with the, <laughs> the, the kind of drippy clothes and drippy scarves and boots and stuff. So, And once I picked that, you know, that sort of determined the colors that I was looking for. And then I went through all my scraps uh, the gold is actually part of a, a piece of wallpaper that I cut up and uh, there's the backing is black canvas and there's also some white canvas in there. And as I was doing it, I realized what this was about and that was a reaction to lockdown. This was in 2020 and I love to go out to dinner and I had not been able to go out to dinner for quite a while. And somehow the uh, ordering food in just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> and so that became what this collage was all about. Um, there's a lot more glitter in it than shows up in, um, in the uh, photo because uh, you know gold kind of doesn't really show up as gold, but this is all just a whole bunch of gold on top. I stumbled across it. Anyway, it was just great fun to do and reminded me about what life should be about. <laughs> well, Barbara, you, you're calling it a funny piece. I took it very serious. <laughs> now, now, now I see why. Obviously, I got to identify with that, but uh, I liked it very much. I have the same drawer full of scarves, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>
What do you do with me? I, I, after you, me you, too. <laughs> after you, I can see, I, I can see the thinking that you have described in the piece. And it's, it's really nice. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Barbara. Okay, and someone else said that they wanted to speak. Who was that? Uh, my name is Blanche Brown. Blanche, okay. Blanche. There you are. All right. Actually, I think you have two two pieces. Yes. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So I'm an uh, artist, a multimedia artist, and the the thing about collage. I mean, that's so such a broad thing. I just like to say that. Um, I like to use a lot of different fabrics and I do hand dye my fabrics um, as long as well as adding different mm -hmm. type of elements to kind of convey uh, what I'm trying to say. And, and basically that internal dialogue that I deal with as a professional in, in um, <clears throat> the field that I work in deals with mental health and specifically uh, mental health with um, uh, those who are marginalized, who typically are marginalized, if you will, um, who may not necessarily have a voice or where it might be that their concerns might not be um, as as always um, spoken, spoken up about as others might be. So the work has to do with um, African-American women uh, or women and women of color um, and their mental health, as well as you know, the concern that um, there's still, even today, a lot of people who are not getting their mental health concerns met. Um, and that stigma continues to, to, to be a barrier. So my pieces speak to that as well as, and, and to, I'd like a dichotomy between uh, strength, um, mental strength, mental um, stamina, as well as not getting the need met and when there is a tendency to try to fake it or to try to be strong when when you know in essence you're trying to put on a face and and so typically in some of the the imagery and some of the historical um, narratives that is kind of one of the things that I speak about in in my work because it's important to get that out there even in our in today's time so that's what this piece is about. Um, this one that you're looking at, Black Pearl Shine Vest, um, you know, even in the midst of struggles as the piece kind of goes, intertwines different images of both strength and, you know, vulnerabilities, which we all have, that is a way of trying to cope with just the ongoing uh, theme of what can happen if you're not, you know, managing, you know, the things that need to be managed. And a lot of times society will put the pressures on or they'll be uh, having to deal with microaggressions and things like that. Uh, of course, systemic racism plays into it a lot. And a lot of times um, things can be overlooked where people are struggling and a lot of people just don't understand what the struggle's about or, or don't care to understand and don't seek further. Blanche, I, I thought there was very straightforward rawness to yeah. your work, fragile at the same time. So interesting to hear what you have to say. Um, wow. and, and you have a figure piece in, right? A profile? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> see me, <laughs> see me, hear me, feel me. Right, right. <laughs> avoid those, I know. those two pieces that you had in. I had to yeah. put one of them in. Right. See me, hear me, feel me. Same idea. If you look at some of the... Um, the intricate, it, like you said, the rawness, and it and it is supposed to be that way. Um, you'll see, though, that at the same time, she's, she, you know, she is trying to express her femininity and that she belongs in matters, and that uh, we can recognize that part of her as being uh, important. You know, <laughs> uh, I I really enjoy that just just the position of using, you know, sometimes painful things to also bring about at the same time their strength through that. So their strength through trauma, some, you know, a lot of times their strength through struggle. And yeah, she's got her hand on her hip there. 
see me, hear me, feel me. Um, and there's various uh, elements in the piece. If you could see it up close, that you'd see the writings and uh, other things that are in there that kind of indicate that. Yeah, look closely at <laughs> A lot of attitude in the piece. <laughs> yeah, lots well of attitude. Done. De definitely. Okay. Congratulations. Wonderful, Thank you. wonderful, Thank you. both of them. Thank, Thank you for you. that. Okay, do we have anybody else who'd like to speak? Um, uh, maybe I will. Okay. Let me look at it, remember <laughs> <laughs> what I did. There you are. What is the name of it? Oh. Out of the Depth. Oh yeah, out of the depths. Well, this sort of really echoes a lot of what other people have said about the tough times we've been going through. And uh, the, the idea of just fighting through it all and winning kind of, and finding the light, so to speak, uh, the, you know, out of the depths. I did want to say that some of it is a, a lot of the it was a citrusol exper exploration, and um, I was really pleased with some of the effects that I got. <clears throat> and um, what was I going to say? Uh, I used um, the image of the figure is from a painting that I had done in the past. And I very painstakingly did that uh, skin thing that you make. You put coats and coats of of uh, um, gel over a picture, a, a photo, and then you peel it away. <laughs> it's very uh, lengthy procedure, but I had that on hand and uh, put put that in there and went back in with. Uh, probably some oil pastels to enhance the colors and so forth. Um, and I was very excited and pleased that, that you accepted it into the show, Jane. It's so wild, you know, I didn't know who did the work until tonight. You what? I didn't know who did these pieces until tonight. <laughs> That's well, awesome. That was really fascinating for me. And this is one, Sylvia, that how was this done? I took a lot of time with it. Uh, okay. and so that's got to be built up of paint, but there are other areas that I just, I couldn't figure out exactly what the technique was. Very mysterious, wonderful piece. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I, I said something about it because. Yes, I, yes, I appreciate I, it. Oh, I will just say too that this is uh, this happens to me a lot. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no ideas, and I just bring a lot of stuff on the table, and start. And so uh, as I'm working, then things come up. The the emotions or the feelings or the ideas start to emerge and then blossom into something uh, that has its own name already. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, anybody else? Somebody else, please? No, I guess uh, it's Still quiet, there? all quiet out there. Anybody? Anybody else? Last call. We're trying to get, you know, see all the names who are, who said they'd like to talk and hopefully we haven't forgotten I, anybody. I think we got everybody, but they don't always show up in everybody's uh, chat. Yeah. So. so we want to make sure. Right. Okay. So um, I guess that concludes this part of it. I would like to make some announcements. Do we want to use uh, put uh, everybody up? Uh, everybody that's still here with us and uh, show up is the whole crowd. Full screen. Let's see, how do I get shares? I forget how to get out of chat. Um, close. Okay. So there's just a few, let's see, there's a number of people left here with us. So I just want to remind people to check out the fa uh, CAA Facebook page because there's lots of great ideas. And uh, remind you that our newsletter is always filled with fun information and uh, it just has, Quaylen does such a fabulous job uh, giving us advice and things to do and look at. 
And um, if we can just have an open discussion now, uh, if anybody wants to just chit chat, we can do that. I want to especially thank Jim Morphesis for a splendid show. I mean, it was quite uh, exciting and your selections from all 303 things was, you know, a challenge and you did a great job of, of putting on a beautiful show for us. Thank you so much. Well, again, Sylvia, thank you all for whoever chose me. I um, I was uh, cursing it at times, but, uh, <laughs> but the show is great. And I so enjoyed tonight speaking with, with everybody and uh, talking about your, your works. And I do think it's a terrific exhibition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, Very grateful that you picked my piece. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, my, it, was, it was worthy. It was very good. Well, I wish you success, uh, continued success with your own personal work there. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, I, how nice. Thank you. I, yeah. I do appreciate that. Yes. Keep on. Keep on. Mr. Morphesis was um, guest speaker at one of our, our recent past meeting. And so there's a recording of it if you want to know more about his work. Okay. You didn't know, it was a really good session. Yes. Also oh. enjoyable. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. And congratulations to all of you. Thank 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 you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing exhibit. So, um, just, Pat, uh, Barbara, anybody we have? Oh, is there anything in the chat that needs to be? Uh, oh, well, I think that's uh, just of everybody that uh, all the artists that spoke. There may be comments made on on your work or on your whatever you were saying. So you can check the rec where will the chat uh the chat Sylvia you, you can go ahead and save the chat yourself it's the three little dots down by the the happy face but I have also saved it so um I I will uh, uh send you it's just a, a simple text file and I, I will email that over as soon as we're done then oh. I get the recording later and uh I'll put a, a you know a, a title sheet in the front of it and uh and um, I that, just, that, that'll go on YouTube. Okay. I, was, I, you I, don't, I don't need the chats. I wanted to tell other people where they can see the chat uh, in case somebody said something about their work. There, that would be nice because um, I think uh, if we if we could have access to it, that would be helpful. Um, if you can send it to me, Pat, I'll I'll post the chat on the website. Yeah. And see if, if you, you could can also save it yourself. The, send me the website uh the youtube link I'll post yeah i'll send well. you the youtube link so, so right. probably um i i'm doing political stuff all day tomorrow so it Good. may not be till monday <laughs> that that's important right now yeah, no, yeah. and um yeah barbara you should be able to save the chat yourself um uh, it's it's in the chat and it's the very bottom uh thing with the smiley oh face save and, chat i got it yeah so it'll just save it in a and uh you can never find it it puts it in the drive uh folder for uh zoom on your computer okay so you, you have to look for it a little it's not in a logical location yeah i know where my zoom folder is so okay so it'll it should be in there be there Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, if anyone gets a copy of the actual recording, if they could for forward it to me, I'd appreciate it because I'm trying to incorporate the winner's um, remarks into the next newsletter, and I know I didn't get it. Thanks. Just, just a quick thanks. Will uh, this be available on our website as well, the, the reception? Yeah, the yeah. If Pat yeah, sends can... me the link, I'll put it on the website. Yeah. Okay, great. I have a, oh, I'm, I have a quick question. I forgot, who do we notify if we sell something? Uh, 
notify everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> uh, here and notify either um, Penny Fine or myself at this point, and uh, we will will give the information so it will be marked sold uh, on the exhibit site. Okay, I I sold one, so I'll just tell you. Right. I, I posted it on Facebook and I posted the whole show on Facebook and a friend of mine bought it. Not the one that I won an award for, but the other one that's in the show. So that was kind of fun. Oh, good. Yay. Where's our cheesecake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, it was nice. I have, I have another question. I have another question. Where would anybody be notified if someone was interested in a piece? Would it be directly to them on their own personal um, yeah. media? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the the way it's set up is that uh, you would the the buyer or interested party would contact the artist directly, and you negate you negotiate, and there is no um, fees to be paid in this with our virtual shows. So you you just you handle the whole thing, including shipping and all of that. Thank you. This is just personal. I just want to wave to Mita um, in person because it's been so long and it's so nice to so so nice to see you. So. That's great. You can unmute yourself if you want to say anything. Anybody? How many before? years, Quayla? Wow. Um, it's embarrassing to say that probably, let's see, uh, and 50? we graduated from high school together. Yeah, so oh, that was 68. <laughs> we've known each other since we were like eight or nine years old, yes? Younger, I think. Younger? Six, oh, maybe yeah. three or four. <laughs> oh, wow, lifelong yeah. friends, isn't it? Nice? Yes, but um, not, you know, intermittently we've seen each other. So yeah. But we have, but, 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 uh, but, but, but what every most people here don't know, Quaylin, was that the reason you got in touch with her is because she entered this show. I don't know if anybody heard that. Is no. that how no. she entered the show? Is that how you found her again? Well, well I I had seen Quaylin. I had seen in some. Uh, I think in one of our um, mutual high school newsletters. Someone had said that you were working, and that and that and in in art, and I believe they mentioned that you were that it was mentioned at that point that you are the newsletter editor. However, I did get two pieces in last year, so I knew of the um, group. So mm -hmm. I I did independently come to this group before I found out about your connection. So it is highly, highly coincidental and yeah. very wonderful, of course. I know, I just, it's amazing. So you've been um, in a collage artist show before? Just the, just the one pre, just last year. <gasps> yeah, oh my gosh. I probably saw your name and thought, <laughs> oh, it's another Nita. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I didn't see your name last year. I think I was- No, so I might have not been in that I show. I wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and I might have not been in that show. That was just the first time I had and, and put any of my collage work out anywhere. And well, I was just thrilled. That, you know, I really support regional artists and and groups and things, but to have an, a wide open show is is somewhat rare. And yes. um, so I I would I I thought, well, this is a good chance, an opportunity. And no, I didn't see your name then. And late in the intervening year, I think I somehow found out about your work with the organization and I said well hmm that seems interesting and then so I was fortunate enough to get in this year and then I thought well I should contact her but if she doesn't get in that might be a little uncomfortable <laughs> well you know we, it, we, we, so we both are, it's great <laughs> well that's really cool that you got in that show I mean that's that's very exciting but yeah, I still I mean, might have not thought I just figured there was another Nita you I know <laughs> I, I I I am very excited. So um, that is very amazing. Really I can't believe. Th this. Thanks to everyone else for indulging indulging our little personal conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Really, really. Really. It's just always it's always interesting to hear. You know this. It, so 
uh, serendipitous, so to speak. Well, sadly, collage is not as recognized as it should be. So the opportunities are a bit limited. And I think, well, of course, it's rarer to be, rarer somewhat to be a collage artist. So uh, it is very coincidental in some ways, but in, you know, in others, it's like, well, we were bound to cross paths because the, the world's a little small, you know, it's a, it's yeah, a wonderful small so. world that way. We didn't yeah. mention, I didn't mention, which I meant to, is that we had uh, entries from out of the country for this show. And uh, a lot of our own members didn't get in because uh, it was uh, an, an open show. And of I course, know, that's a hard, that's a hard call. I mean, I live in Pennsylvania, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So well, we, uh, yeah, we have a lot of members all, all across the United mm -hmm. States. But in Canada, and uh, but this time we got not members but entries, but we have members that are from Canada and all over the U.S. So um, now you are you a member? <laughs> You're a member if you were in the last show. She was no, on the second. I, I'm the obviously show. going to be a member. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you better cool. or quite little be mad at you. Well, yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I saw. I, I was. I thought perhaps last year was a fluke, but this year is is certainly, um, you know, <laughs> an uh, acknowledgement. Acknowledgement yeah, of your so talent. I, I mean, it, it it is more of a confirmation this year. So definitely, and I am exceedingly grateful for all yeah. of that for the whole world that's opened up. Good. That's really cool. You know who's going to want to know about this is Larry Langley. Well, <laughs> he's uh, a Facebook friend, uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't. I won't say anything. It's just we'll, fun. We'll 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 work that out between. Okay. Us. okay. You, know, <laughs> you guys can do a Zoom call to each other. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for that. <laughs> um, is there anybody else that would like to chime in before we uh, say good night? Okay. Well, thank I you. All. Thank I you. just, it's yeah. so nice to hear and see everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bye, right. Kaylin. Bye, 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 bye Mina. You look we great. Love, Thank you. Love, you do too. We love you. We're still, we're still vertical. <laughs> yes. <I'd like laughs> to, um, <laughs> bye, Lynn. Stop yes. talking, please. I want to know. Lauren, we let we miss you and we love you. I know, Lauren. I love you all it's so, so much. It's so exciting to see. You're here. Well, I'm glad I, you're here. Well, I'm go to sleep so, now. It's late. Yeah, go <laughs> bed. Bye. Well, um, I know, I'm excited for the general meeting, and um, later this month, um, I'll be back on screen. <laughs> so, um, but beautiful work, and um, it's just so I love being able to hear, um, you know, everyone discuss um their pieces. So. Thank you and good night. And, good night. <laughs> okay. And Carol, we didn't get to, nice see. to see. Carol, are you still with us? Carol Priamo? Um, seems to be. Unmute yourself. Can you unmute, Carol? I guess you're not here right now. All mm -hmm. right. Well, with that, I would like to say good night. Thank you all. Thank you, especially Pat and Barbara. Quaylin for helping with chat and all of you for just being here. Thanks. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good luck. Good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>